This episode of Command N, going social with the golden guy, touting Shaquille O'Neal, and the hottest video game news on the web. Welcome to Command N, I'm Amber in downtown Toronto. We have a great show for you today. I'll be talking about the future of micro video networks and apps, but first the latest tech news with Jeff and Laura. Well, I wished for it in our Command N 2013 predictions, and Sony answered it even faster than I expected by announcing the PlayStation 4. I think players will love the integrated sharing button for uploading gameplay, more downloadable gaming, and screen sharing where you can temporarily give another player control of your game, which is very cool if you're stuck. But the big changes are really under the hood, with huge improvements in memory, graphics, and a welcome effort to make the game more friendly for game creators. And in more news from the tech giants, Google has released an incredible video demonstrating the amazing features of Google Glass. Okay, Glass, record a video. This is it. We're on in two minutes. Okay, Glass, hang out with the Flying Club. Google Photos of Tiger Heads. Hmm. You ready? You ready? Right there. Okay, Glass, take a picture. While having a heads-up display system is very cool for a lot of things, there are also some genuine concerns about privacy and human behavior. When you see someone walking along with an always-on video recorder strapped to their head, I'd be a little concerned. Yeah, I think that's going to be something we'll have to get a hang of, the hang of. But uh, another big announcement is the unveiling of the HTC One, which is taking on the iPhone 5 and Samsung Galaxy for smartphone supremacy. This Android phone includes an attractive zero-gap tapered form factor, favorited content live on your home screen through Blink Feed, a one-press continuous shooting camera to take video pics plus great gallery previews, as well as built-in amplified stereo speakers and some interesting TV remote applications. Really looking forward to checking that one out. Finally, given the enormous amount of social media traffic it generates, it'd be hard for us to ignore the 2013 Oscars, which gathered almost 9 million tweets with Adele's Skyfall performance topping out at a whopping 82,300 tweets per minute. <laughs> wow. And we'll also be subject to a hopefully short-lived Jennifer Lawrence tripping meme. Yeah, I, I hope so too. Over to Amber to talk about micro video. <laughs> For this week's social media review, I wanted to talk about the popularity of micro video networks and apps. These tools allow you to shoot really short snippets of video that are then shared across social networking websites. One popular app is called Tout. It's very straightforward. It lets you shoot 15 seconds of video. And in many cases, it's very personality driven. So they have celebrities out there using it, like Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> Probably the most popular of all of these apps is Twitter's Vine. Really simple to use, you shoot six seconds of video. Basically what's interesting about this for me is how many brands have jumped on to Vine. So we've seen people out there like Dove, for example, create amazing videos like this neat little bowling video. An interesting way for brands to get the word out about what they're doing in just six seconds or less. One of my favorite new video apps in this category is called Echograph. This is an app that was acquired by Vimeo. You know, the really cool video sharing website that in some cases can with YouTube. What I love about Echograph is the ability to shoot these great videos, but then what you do is you erase the stillness in the video. So essentially you're shooting 10 seconds of video, for example, you choose your favorite still image, and then you erase the portion of the image where you want to see the video come back into frame. With Echograph, we've created a storytelling medium. By which I mean that you can use the Echograph in whatever manner you'd like. You can take it into any sort of nonlinear editing program as well as iBooks Author. And you can really take advantage of all the things it has to offer, but in the manner that you want.
We're here talking with Andrew Coe from Walnut Networks about their new product, dc to go Andrew, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, uh, dc to go is a mobile data center that we build inside shipping containers and it has all the standard amenities of any other conventional data center. We have cooling, onboard power, backup gen sets, UPS, raised access floor. It has standard racks in it that are vendor neutral. dc to go can be picked up with a standard boom truck and placed on a flatbed trailer and transported via road systems. Since they are built within standard ISO containers, they can be moved without a permit and being placed on trains, boats, or any sort of vehicle transportation on the roads and pass under overpasses. So after dc to go arrives at its destination where it needs to be temporarily set up or permanently set up, uh, it can be placed on just the raw ground or up on a concrete pad and we can bring in either regular service from the grid or we can bring, run it completely off generator which can run on liquid propane or natural gas. And we'll just do a little demo here. So I'll throw the main power for the can and we see emergency lighting comes on and right now we're running on UPS and battery and then once the, once the generator has detected that there's no more power from the grid we'll hear it start up so it's doing its self test right now uh, and then in a few minutes once the power is stabilized we'll back feed the generator uh, power for the can from the generator so you see now we're completely running on liquid propane and with this particular model with three propane tanks we can run for a maximum of 18 or 8 days uh, and then it only takes about 10 or so minutes to fill up the tanks, which we have about 18 minutes of backup power on site in battery form. These particular models are also very useful for people in government own pre-existing data centers or need small compute powers or need to have a distributed network. Uh, so if you have using this for disaster recovery, you can hot hold one of these on a trailer at your pre-existing location, have it sync and replicate with your current data center and already have an off-site location that you would be able to tow this to that's pre-prepared. Uh, you could also use these as uh, backup substations for uh, service providers who would have substations distributed throughout the city and you could back one of these up to the one and just plug them in and ready to go. And you just quick connect your power and you quick connect your fiber optics and you're ready to go. That's it for this episode of Command N. As always, we'd love to hear from you online at commandn.tv. You can also find us on Twitter and on Facebook. And don't forget to add us to your Google Plus circles. We'll see you soon. Hey, I got a job for you. If you want to be Chuck's intern, hit them at hashtag Chuck's intern. Good luck. <laughs> You're going to need it. Chuck's in time. I would never be Chuck's in time. I hate Chuck.